Good afternoon, delegates. I have a question for you. Are you ready for a Republican governor? I thought so. I'm Matt Dean. And I'm Laura Dean. <laughs> this past year, we've met you in your homes, in your coffee shops, in your businesses, and in your BPOUs. We so appreciate your commitment to our party and the kindness you have shown our family. I serve with Jeff Johnson in the House, and after spending many months together on the campaign trail, my respect for Jeff Johnson has only grown. His ability to bring this state together is unquestionable. But to do that and to bring our state out of the Dayton chaos, first, we got to bring this party together. And I know Jeff Johnson can do both. Jeff has done the hard work to reach delegates, earn trust, and build the vision of what Minnesota can be if we elect a Republican governor who will actually govern that way. Jeff will start with the Constitution and defend our individual states' rights by telling the federal government to make no laws that are left up to the states and by telling the cities you can't make up laws of your own. Jeff is pro-life. He believes in the sanctity of life from conception to natural death. And let, and let me just conclude with this, because this is really important. Jeff will honor the endorsement of this convention because Jack honors you. Yeah. That is why, that is why it is our pleasure and our honor to nominate the next governor of the great state of Minnesota, Jeff Johnson. We're in the money. We're in the money. fundamental generational change to a system that has become arrogant and out of touch and completely broken. We need to change the very culture in St. Paul from that of telling everybody else how to live their lives to actually serving the people who pay their salaries. So for starters, we're going to dismantle the Met Council. We're going to rein in the DNR and the MPCA and the Department of Education and every bureaucracy that doesn't understand their sole purpose to exist is to serve us, not to control us. We are going to clean house in our state agencies and give people their government back in the state of Minnesota. Yeah, one of my favorite expressions that came out of the 2016 election was drain the swamp. That's what needs to happen in Minnesota. Donald Trump is taking on the system and blowing up the status quo, and so will Jeff Johnson. He's going to crush Met Council like a bug. Splat. The government is supposed to work for the people. People of Minnesota don't understand the power that the governor of Minnesota has to rein in out of control and non-responsive state agencies. Jeff Johnson can do that. Our DNR is a $1.2 billion budget. It's a big machine, and the hunters and fishermen of Minnesota contribute a lot of money to that process, and they deserve a better shake than they're getting right now. 
I've never seen farmers more upset than I have during this administration on their property rights, permitting, all kinds of things that have come out of this administration with very little oversight from anyone. Farmers are frustrated. We let the Democrats be in charge of the state. We're going to chase away our largest employers. We're one of the most unfriendly places in the country to do business or start a new one. And that needs to change. Jeff didn't have to twist my arm at all. Jeff was my candidate from the very beginning. If there's one thing I can say about former Governor Pawlenty, I had a lot of fun with him at the fishing openers. I wish him well, but I'm not looking forward to seeing him in St. Paul. We can't have a governor who's happy of a 9% budget increase because the Democrats want it well. We need a governor who understands the fee is a tax. Who is Pawlenty going to answer to? He's not going to answer to me. He's not going to answer to you. Jeff Johnson is going to answer to you, and Jeff is going to answer to me because Jeff is the grassroots. He's one of us. Jeff Johnson is not going to ride the fence, and I think that's really important. We have so many politicians that ride the fence. What is that about? People can see truth. People are sick of the status quo, fence riders and swamp creatures. 2016 was a complete game changer. We need authentic truthful, honest leadership that speaks to people at a grassroots level. If you're a gun owner for protection, for recreation, for any means whatsoever, Jeff Johnson is your candidate to protect your Second Amendment rights. The DFL has turned their back on the Iron Rangers and the people in CD8, and we're not going to put up with it anymore. Jeff has got a message that's resonating with our people up there. President Trump won the 8th District big, and Jeff Johnson's going to be able to win the 8th District big too. Jeff Johnson is going to win. Every day I help people who need vocational training and employment, whether they're welfare to work recipients, immigrants, or they're disadvantaged youth that need assistance in becoming self-sufficient. Jeff believes in everyone's ability to become independent and self-sufficient. Jeff walks the walk. That inspired me to get involved in his campaign. The biggest issue up in our area is the refugee resettlement issues. We need to put the Constitution first. We have laws and rules, and people coming here need to abide by those laws and rules. We want security for our country. I feel Jeff definitely wants the same kind of a future for his kids and grandkids that I want for mine. I'm so glad that my parents landed in the United States. Um, being born here has such privilege, but Democrats are purposely wanting to keep all minority groups in assistant programs. And we grew up in the, these assistant programs. And when you realize that, oh, all these opportunities has been there all along, but we were never introduced to it, eventually I figured out that that's why I became a Republican. What gives me hope is someone like Jeff Johnson. Jeff Johnson can do it. He's our winner. I was out shopping uh, for a gift for Sandy because I am a, a loving and caring husband. <laughs> and I was at the mall and I saw a friend of mine. So I went up to talk to her and she introduced me to the young woman who was on the other side of the counter who was helping her. And the young woman's name was Rebecca. My friend introduced me and said, this is Jeff Johnson, he's running for governor. And Rebecca said, oh, I know you. I saw your video where you crashed the party at the governor's mansion. She said, I'm voting for you. I've never voted before. And I think we probably disagree on a bunch of things. But she said, that stuff doesn't matter all that much to me. Because I'm a single mom with a six-year-old daughter. I work full time at this job. And then I work a lot of nights as a waitress at a bar. We live in kind of a crappy apartment. But I can't afford to give her anything better than that. And she said, the only thing that matters to me is that she doesn't turn out like I did. Everything that's gone wrong in my life, I want to go right for her. And I want her to have opportunities that I didn't have. And that's what I heard you say in your video. And what you cared about most was that every single Minnesotan, regardless of where they are on the ladder, had a better opportunity for a better life. And I believed you. And that's all that matters to me. That's what we get to give to people in November when we win opportunity, freedom, a little more hope than what they have right now, we're actually going to be able to make life better in a huge way 
for millions of Minnesotans, and that's what this is really all about. And together, we can make this state a much better place. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your grassroots governor, Jeff Johnson. Thank you. Thank you all so much. You guys are awesome. I'm here today to ask for your endorsement, and I will abide by your endorsement, and together we're going to give people their government back in this state. So please join me. So before I start, I want to introduce a few very special people up here. I am so excited to introduce to you my running mate, former Lieutenant Colonel, future Lieutenant Governor Donna Bergstrom and her family. And then, I have to tell you, I am so thankful every single day uh, that I have a family that is so supportive of me and loves me almost unconditionally. My dad is here from the Becker County delegation. Please thank him. And also, please thank my sons, Thor and Rolf, and my beautiful wife, Sandy, for everything they do and all the support that they give to me. Thank you. So many of you know who I am, but for those of you who don't, let me just tell you a little bit about myself. First and foremost, more important than anything else, I am a husband, a father, a very proud American, and a follower of Jesus Christ. That's first. I am an unflinching defender of our Second Amendment rights, and I am an advocate for the elderly and the disabled and the unborn, the most vulnerable people in our state. And I, I happen to believe that the role of the federal government when it comes to our state should be limited to three things. Defending our borders, delivering our mail, and staying the hell out of our business. So, so as your new governor, I will be on a plane to explain to Attorney General Sessions or whoever else I have to, that until we tell them otherwise, Minnesota's participation in the refugee resettlement program is going to stop, period. I believe that we know best, not the government, what our health insurance should look like, or how we commute to work, or what we eat or drink, or what sort of fireworks we buy, for cripe's sake. My boys don't need a nanny anymore, and neither do you. We're going to get Minnesota out of the nannying business once and for all. Amen? Oh, and one more thing about me. I am the Met Council's worst nightmare. <laughs> but none of that matters if we don't win. And I really believe that there's a lot to winning, but it boils down to two big things. Number one, we have to choose our strongest candidate. And number two, we have to have a, a message that captures the imagination of Minnesotans from every walk of life and every corner of this state. So let me start with the strongest candidate. And I will tell you, I have the utmost respect and admiration for both Philip and Mary, and will support either one of those if you pick them over me today. But I, but I'm the only one in this race who can say that 900,000 Minnesotans voted for me just three and a half years ago. I ran against a very popular incumbent and beat him by 10% with independence. I raised more money than Mark Dayton did in 2014 and have raised three times more than anyone else here today. I have far greater name recognition than anyone else seeking your endorsement, and I have a unique geographic background, the only one in the race who can compete everywhere in the state, not just in one area like the suburbs or greater Minnesota. Sandy and I spent the first half of our lives in northwestern Minnesota. And I did extremely well in 2014, but Donald Trump proved to me that we can blow the freaking roof off of Greater Minnesota this fall if we do it right, and that's exactly what I intend to do. And by the way, having a Marine from Duluth help us kick some butt in the 8th Congressional District ain't going to hurt either. Thank you, Donna. 
The suburbs, that's where I'm the strongest. I have won big over and over and over again in the suburbs. In my last race, I got 75% of the vote. Not in my town, but in 22 suburbs across Hennepin County. I know how to win big in the suburbs, and we will do it again this November. And then there's Minneapolis and St. Paul. And unlike the others in this race, I'm not going to show up for the first time there tomorrow to campaign. I've been in the heart of Minneapolis for nine years trying to solve some really difficult problems. And my message to those good people is really simple. The DFL has gotten fat off of your boats for 50 years and they've done absolutely nothing to help you. I'm going to fight for you and your children whether you are Republicans or not. We have to challenge DFL hypocrisy everywhere in this state. But along with picking the best candidate, we have to share a vision that just lights a fire under Minnesotans, and we have to give special attention to all those new voters that Donald Trump brought out in 2016. And I've had people say to me, Jeff, you can't win Trump voters, you're not angry enough. But Donald Trump didn't win because he was angry, he won because, because he gave hope to all of the forgotten Americans who thought no one cared about them in government anymore. And there are a lot of forgotten Minnesotans, too. I am a Norwegian Lutheran from northern Minnesota. Donald Trump is not. But we, have, we are both very direct and we have a message, a vision that is very similar. So let me tell you what that vision is for me. I see a state where no one believes anymore that the system is rigged, where we have drained our own little swamp right here in Minnesota, where legislative sessions no longer end in midnight backroom deals, and where you have a governor that proudly vetoes every garbage omnibus bill that violates our Minnesota Constitution. That is my vision. I see a state where we are demanding that our state agencies actually do serve the people. So, you know, I intend to make bureaucrats spend a few days every year working for those whom they regulate. So, for example, the ones who devised the buffer strip law, they get to come to your farm and work for you, and you can explain to them directly how well their genius plan is actually panning out. <laughs> and finally, I see a state where we are lifting up not the powerful, not the famous, but the everyday heroes in Minnesota, the ones who get up at 5 a.m. every day and work the assembly line or, or drive the truck or serve and protect us, the ones who raise their kids right and pay their taxes and volunteer their time, those are the people I grew up with. Those are the people who make Minnesota so extraordinary. And I want to lead a state where those Minnesotans have replaced the CEOs and the lobbyists as the ones we listen to when we're making tough decisions. I want to lead a state where we have given the government of Minnesota back to the hardworking, forgotten Minnesotans who have made this place so amazing. That's where I want to take Minnesota, and I know together we can get there. I hope to earn your support today, and I thank you for everything you do.